Welcome everybody to the Wi-Fi of Everything. Hey guys. So hey, we're here today to kind of give an introduction to a brand new thing that we started. Uh, we're doing video series. Yep. This is a video series starting with Miss Systems, and they're going to talk about a range of topics. Yeah. So I guess we're going to start off today with a uh, kind of an introduction of who Mist is with Jeff Aaron. Yep. And then, then we're going to move to Bob Friday. He's going to talk about VBLE and also analytics. And then we've got Randy Fry is going to close it out talking about dynamic PCAP and WXLAN. Yeah, so it's going to be a great series. It's going to be full of wonderful topics that Miss Systems is bringing to the wireless industry. Yeah, so we, uh, I was excited. Yeah. It was a great time. We, yeah. I mean, it was really fun to do the series. Um, and I we, learned a lot, too. Yeah, And, and we, we hope you learn a lot. So, yeah, enjoy, everybody. Thanks. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Aaron, and I'm head of marketing over here at MIST. Uh, for those not familiar with the company, we are the first AI-driven wireless LAN. So we're all about uh, using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and other technologies to do really one of two things. One is on the Wi-Fi side to make it more predictable, more reliable, and perhaps most importantly, more measurable. So you can actually have visibility into the user experience, and you have all the tools in place to actually simplify Wi-Fi operations and to uh, really scale your Wi-Fi resources in a, in a more seamless fashion. Uh, the other thing we do is we add uh, location services uh, into the equation. So we integrate Wi-Fi and BLE and IoT uh, with this concept known as virtual BLE, where you can actually do high accuracy location services without requiring battery powered beacons. Uh, so we're really excited. Uh, we call this the new wireless network. We think this is where the wireless industry is going, and we're really excited to be leading that charge. Hi, everybody. Welcome to MIST. Yeah, we're, here we're here at the here MIST headquarters. Mist. And we are going to be talking with Bob Friday from MIST. Yeah, welcome, and Bob. And this will be our first video yeah. in a series of, I think, three or four videos that we're going yeah. to do with MIST. So it's That's exciting. Great. And we're going to start off with VBLE from MIST and go into you know, what is VBLE, how does it look in the dashboard, and what can we expect from yeah. VBLE for those who don't know what it is and how they can get into it. Okay. And also for those of us, you know, we know who you are, Bob, but who are you, Bob? Yeah, so uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. You know, so Bob Friday, co-founder and uh, CTO of Miss Systems. Uh, you know, my background has been wireless for most of my life. Started with the old Metricom Ricochet story, did this airspace thing for controller for <laughs> enterprise, got acquired by Cisco. Nice. Did the CTO thing at Cisco for a while, and mm -hmm. now I'm here doing the Mist adventure. Outstanding. Awesome. Well, we like your adventure. Yes. <laughs> it's a fun adventure. All and right. Then, so let's let's talk about VBLE. VBLE. What is VBLE? Yeah, Just a quick overview. Yeah, yeah. So I think you know VBLE is one of these things. Mm. You know, when we started Mist, we really didn't start Mist with the uh, the thought of doing VBLE. Uh, it really came about because we had really built this real time architecture that did all this fast processing. Okay. Uh, we talked to some customers. They said, "Hey, this BLE stuff is becoming a pain because they're basically deploying all these battery beacons, these things." Oh, uh, yeah. You know, and that's where the V comes in. Yeah. Virtual. Yeah. And so this is what people are deploying when we first met them. You know, they were deploying yeah. these all around little retail stores. How about how and, long do they last? Uh, well, they will claim, you know, if you talk to the battery guys, they claim this will last 10 years. <laughs> uh, how long talk, do they really last? <laughs> you know, if you talk to customers, you know, I hear they last maybe two years if you're lucky. Oh, wow. Well, uh, that's a full-time job if you're yeah, a big right. retailer. Someone's got to go and exchange these batteries every two years. Yeah. And, you know, when we talk to several customers, you know, they're flying around to stadiums and everything. You know, it's like 50000 or dollars more a year wow. just to go around and have kind of a battery maintenance program. On yeah, keep track of them, too. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, reprogramming and... Yeah. Oh, geez. But I would say the customers we talked to, we got into this, was really some retail customers who were trying to do these for, you know, when you walk into stores. Uh, their big problem was, hey, the store changes configuration. Mm -hmm. You know, once they change things around, they change their marketing program, they found they had to move these tags around. Okay. okay. Uh, and that's where kind of the virtual is like, hey, can, yeah. can you guys This is where you now? guys come in. Yeah. So why don't we dive into VBLE? How do you want to start this? Um, we... I'd say we start with the physical before All we start right. showing off the yeah. thing. Can you explain this to me? Because this is this thing's pretty. Yeah. So this is a work of art. You know, I thought it'd be, <laughs> you know, besides doing this technical thing, I, we could turn this into a piece of art and hang it on the ceiling and sell it as art. But uh, yeah. you know, this started off actually as kind of a beginnings of this. You know, mm -hmm. after we talked to customers, uh, first thing we did, we had put a bunch of these around the ceiling. I said, okay, you guys, you know, oh. can we? You know, can we actually virtualize this? Uh, so it started with about 16 of these out in that room there. 
Wow. Um, and then we stuck those up in the room to see if we can get everything to work. Mm -hmm. um, proved to ourselves that we could make this work. Okay. Uh, the problem is sticking 16 of these things on the ceiling is kind of a pain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I know a couple of companies that would probably love to build you a mounting solution. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, Mandarin and POE cable, each of these things. Um, and so really, this would say, okay, you know, that worked with spatial. This is spatial diversity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, have these all over the place. Uh, so instead of having spatial diversity, we kind of said, hey, can we have antenna diversity? You know, so this is about worth about eight of these. Okay. Oh, so okay. this has got a 16 element array on it. Wow. Um, with about eight different beams. You know, so that was the beginnings of the adventure of trying to make sure that we could actually trade off spatial diversity for beam okay. diversity. That's nice. That's and it, I mean, actually, I think this could go good. Like, if you take this over to San Francisco MoMA, the yeah. Modern Art Museum, you could yeah, probably you run go. their entire system off of those, and they would not have a problem yeah, with that. Yeah. If the mist thing doesn't work out, there's yeah, always there's, the, the art, there's art, the art thing. <laughs> Working art now, that's what it is, right? Yeah. So why don't we see the art yeah. on the <laughs> dashboard? Let's take a look uh, at it. So this is an example of, you know, what customers actually see once they get it all up and running. Um, so here what you see is the actual mist office here. These here are the actual arrays, you know, sitting around the office. Okay. Uh, if you really wanted to show, like, the, let me add the uh, beacons and zones. So this is an example of how we added virtual beacons, right? So basically, once a customer puts all the infrastructure in place, mm -hmm. puts the BLE Wi-Fi infrastructure in place, then he can simply add a virtual beacon anywhere in this space, right? Oh. Oh, okay. You so know, you move it around. So yeah. do you have kind of a requirement of how many, say, of these? I know you guys have them built into APs, and you also have the standalone um, Bluetooth arrays as well. Is there kind of a minimum number that you need per office space, or how does that kind of per work feet, from a design per square perspective? Feet. Yeah, yeah it, it depends on what the use case is. Okay. Right now we're finding with most customers, you know, for wayfinding, mm -hmm. uh, we stick up these down the hallways about every 15 meters. Okay. Uh, up and down. Something you can put in a hallway that has yeah. to do with, you know, RF. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So this is the, uh, you know, so this is all our customers. These okay. are our healthcare, hospitality customers mm -hmm. who are basically are trying to build some sort of wayfinding yeah. user engagement Makes experience. Makes sense for wayfinding. Yeah. Nice. Um, we have other customers who are doing more of the proximity thing. Okay. You know, they, they've got a big open space um, and they basically want to put these across a big retail store. Yeah. Um, there we do them about every... The density of like high density Wi Fi. Okay. It turns out if you put the Wi Fi, the BLE at the same density of your, kind of your high density Wi Fi deployments, mm -hmm. uh, you start to get this three meter proximity. Oh, nice. Uh, three. So that that, was, that kind of answers my next question. I was going to say what kind of software you're using for designing, but if you're kind of following a high density Wi Fi plan, you're kind of. Correct. Two, uh, what is it, one bird, two stones? Yeah. Or two, two stones, one, or two birds, one yeah. stone. There yeah. we go. Jeez. <laughs> it's a two for one. A two for one type of thing. Nice. Right? Well, that's and, uh, that's good to know. That's yeah. that's because, you know, people start to get into the design aspect. of it goes, ah, now I have to design for BLE. Is right. that something that yeah. lays on top of? And that's why when, when you have your infrastructure in place, you go in here and start adding your virtual BLEs into the floor plan here? Is that what those green circles were? Yeah. And okay. so once they personally, you know, and we have customers right now, and typically, you know, they'll have a converged Wi Fi BLE system. They'll put in our AP41s. And then if they want better accuracy, they'll put in a BT11s, which is our Wi Fi only, hmm. our BLE only solution. Awesome. All right. So let's let's continue looking at this map. Okay. I heard there was um, some, some RF stuff we get to see. Yeah. So if we go back to. The other cool thing we've done is for people who are actually want are connoisseurs of this, um, yeah, so this page. Yeah, we'll go back and look at you know. So this is the actual phone here, and you know, in the boardroom where we're sitting right now. Oh, nice! And so, it's if you actually want to understand what's really going on, you know, and kind of dig into the technology yeah. some more. So you click uh, on RF and right, and this gives you a, an actual are. view of this actual client location, right? That's really impressive yeah. considering that's that's, or, that's really like close. Three feet yeah. around square. I right. mean, you're not, yeah. And so what you're seeing here is the green dot is what the user actually sees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The blue dot is what the, is the raw input into all the algorithms and stuff. Okay. And what you see on here on the right-hand side is basically all the information used to make these location estimates. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's and so beans per second. And so there's a couple things here that's critical, and we'll talk about machine learning here. 
Um, for anyone who's been playing around with location, especially this RSSI based location, the path loss model is a critical piece of the puzzle. Yeah, um, like I can see that as kind of because that's how you determine your location. Basically, that's your key right. algorithm. I mean, that's part of the that's one mm -hmm. of the key elements in trying to figure out your actual location. And this is what relates RSSI to distance. Okay. Uh, and this is why people do all these site surveys. Yes. Right. And yeah. so you look at people, and that's one of the things that we've eliminated here is the need to do all these site surveys. Wow. Uh, you know, and this is by leveraging machine learning, all these fancy stuff that, uh, you know, 15 years ago, I tried to do this. I really couldn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. Back in my aerospace days, yeah. we just didn't have the horsepower. You know, now we have it. So it's interesting to see. So as, as the, the colors are changing in this live view, is that kind of the AP in itself kind of targeting in on where it is? Is it's kind of, is, is the longer it sits, do you get more accuracy? Or is this just kind of, well, so what, what's, what's happening with the changing and everything? So what's really going on here in the background, if you see these little things here, right? Mm -hmm. These are here, the arrays. And so each one of these arrays have eight beams, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And so in this case here, we have 24 different beams that are voting on where you are. Wow. And so each one of those beams is being turned into a probability surface. So you oh. think, you know, in this room right now, okay. I've got 24 different probability surfaces trying to locate me. Now with this color dot here is showing you that probability surface. Right. What you're seeing here is the actual probability of saying, here's where I think you, you are, are in this okay. room right now. And um, it's, a, it's like a triangulation, but it's predicting where you could be based on what it sees in the arrays to try to get that more accurate. Correct. And so what's going on here, this is a little bit fancier than the triangulation stuff we did in the old days. Mm -hmm. This is the beginnings of this particle filter. Okay. You know, so this room has been divided up into one meter search areas. All right. And probabilities are being assigned to every square meter in this room. So okay. every 24, every beam is assigned a probability. And we're basically combining all those probabilities. Wow, that's, that's really cool. Um, so I guess really we might be getting into the machine learning a little bit. But each client device, as we know, is a different device. Correct. So how are you guys dealing with the fact that you have an iPhone here? I don't know why anybody buys Android, but you know. <laughs> You know, you might have a no Samsung device, entry. you know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's like how do you, and again, like say for instance, if you're doing any tracking on say like a MacBook, which has just, you know, it has a stronger, you know, yeah. generates a stronger signal than the iPhone. Well, so I can tell you after doing this after the last couple of years is that the iPhones here be really better than the Androids right now. Hmm. Now... <laughs> That seems strange. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not gonna. No, you I'm, know, an I'm, not, I'm an Android guy. I'm oh, an Android guy. Oh, well, I apologize uh, for the bag. Because he's Android. trying to make it better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there <laughs> right. you go. He's trying to bring Android. I mean. Um... <laughs> but anyway, this is the point: is hey, between Android, iOS, any uh -huh. other devices, all these devices can vary by up to eight dB. I mean, or more. Yeah. That's. Um, and that all gets factored into. This is your path loss model here. Wow. So this screen here basically shows you for every, you know, here's all the different mobile devices we're hearing in the office right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For every different mobile device and for every different access point, uh, we mm -hmm. are keeping a path loss model. Wow. So we're continuously updating or estimating what we think that path loss model is. That's, wow. So is this per environment? So is this just your local environment and then the next environment? Are you able to take kind of that path loss model that you guys gather here and kind of give it out as like a baseline, for instance? We, or, use, it, we use it for global, you know, for global, like if you go to a location and we've never heard this device type before, mm -hmm. we have a global library of all the different okay. devices. You know, PLFs is a starting that's, point. That's yeah. cool, yeah. Um, and, and I imagine if something shows up and it's not really picking up what it is, they could send you the data and you could build on top of that, right? Correct. And so the cool thing about this is, right, we are basically updating this continuously as this device is walking around. Um, so it's getting better and better. And this is kind of the, you know, for the connoisseurs, for people who really, you know, care about this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, this is actually what I call the valley of happiness, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a kind of a picture of, you know, here's all the different, path loss slopes oh. versus mm -hmm. the intercepts uh -huh. wow. you know, for a particular device. And oh, okay. this wow. valley here is the path loss. These are all the answers that make good location. You know, so this up here makes bad location. Yeah. Okay. You know, so what you're looking for is you're looking for an answer somewhere in this valley. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's nice to see your valley is bigger than your bad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so a lot of time with the triangulation method, you were like, oh, sorry, your APs are too close. They're too far. There was it was almost yeah. like a. Sometimes you felt, depending on your wall thickness, right. it's just an incredible amount of yeah. information that you've even gathered. Yeah. On a device, device type being well. And that's what I tell people, right? I mean, this has been around, you know, back at airspace 15 years ago. You know, I tried to do this. This is that we didn't have all the technology and all the processing power to do it on a little one U Linux box. <laughs> you know, now with Amazon and the cloud, yeah. yeah, you know, we can now run these algorithms that actually can right. determine, you know. These unsupervised machine this. learning stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's neat that it's doing it in real time. And so it's, uh, I'm assuming that the more devices you have walking through your area, the more data you're gathering. So Correct. it's just correlating. So it's it's like you want more people to come through because the more that comes through, the better, the bigger your valley gets, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the other key thing, you know, what we found, and you know, and I'm watching this whole space right now is, you know, I, what I tell people is, I think Billy reminds me of, the, of my old Wi-Fi days. Yeah. It's slowly moving from a nice to have to a must have. Yeah. Okay. You know that more and more people are re- looking at indoor location as kind of a requirement. That's a tragedy. I mean, yeah. That, that's it's been around. It was always a nice to have, but now it's becoming. You're right. It's you got to know where things right, are. Right. Well, so for somebody that wants to look into this, you say it's a must have. I see this as being used in a lot of different places. Where does somebody go to get more information? Uh, obviously, you guys are doing this with with your hardware and with the cloud what information do you have for people to share so they can um, learn more i think if you go to like to wwmiss.com slash support slash compare mm-hmm. you can get much more information on you know, how these systems compare to other things out there and all the technical background on it mm-hmm. um you know so if we go up here to let's see if this works Right, so that gets you to all the technical information. Page, yeah. uh, there's also a mismiss.com mm-hmm. compare page that will get you to all the comparison pages. Too. Awesome. Well, we'll link to those um, in, yeah, the we'll in the video description so people can get to um, them. But we're just barely scratching the surface here on this VBLE, you know, but it, this is a good insight for people who want to get started, who want to see what is possible with MIST yeah. and VBLE. And we want to thank you for showing us yeah. what you've got going on here, especially with this live demo here in your office. I think it's impressive. Yes, and if anybody wants to hear more, get more technical, let us know. And I'm sure Bob would love to get down and dirty yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, start getting really technical. So let us know in the comments below. Um, look forward to part two, where we'll be talking, I think, WXLAN. Yes. Awesome. So we'll see you again. Thanks. Bye, Bye everyone. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed the latest episode of the Wi-Fi of Everything. I uh, hope you found it educational, entertaining, and you learned something. So please feel free to leave comments below. Let us know how we're doing. Let us know your ideas. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the notifications button and check out some of our other videos. So until next time, guys, have a good day.